So it's all here then? Every sweet smelling speck of it. As for my compensation, strange form of payment. Why this and not cash? Everyone has a hobby. Some men collect stamps. I collect relics. This thing is called a fascist. A ceremonial axe carried by the bodyguard of Emperor Nero, from which a term fascism derived. No? Uh, a form of rule, which in my opinion is getting a bit of a bad rap lately. DA! Get your hands in the air now! You know, I had this under control. My way's faster. Speed isn't everything, Mr. Thon. You should have learned that lesson by now. Hey, YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my Legends of Tomorrow Episode 5 video, Miami Vice, Top Gun, Reverse Flash, Can't Go Wrong, Legion of Doom. So just careful for spoilers if you haven't seen the episode yet. This is probably my favorite episode so far, Mo you know, mostly because they had so much fun with the 80s genre, and I just think it's so hilarious. You can't really do episodes like this all the time, I think it's been to their great benefit that they've jumped around time, like you don't get stuck in any one particular time for too long. But they had so much fun making fun of the 80s in this episode that I'm going to focus mostly on the comic book stuff, like the, the big reverse flash plan, the Legion of Doom formation. Then I'll talk a little bit more about the funny stuff. So just going down the list, reverse flash, Miami Vice entrance. My way is faster. They're in Miami doing a Miami Vice riff, so you have Crockett and Tubbs, and Damien Dark references the nuke bomb. You hired me 45 years ago to blow up New York City. So we know they've already been working together, but not in an official capacity. They haven't actually formed the Legion of Doom. There is no team up till the end of the episode when Damien Dark like finally comes to the realization that he needs to start manipulating time in order to change his destiny. The only thing in the episode that I felt like didn't come across was Damien Dark's arc. Like, he is such a non-reactor, like he's so chagrined at everything that it's hard to tell what he's feeling at any given moment. So I feel like, you know, at the end of the episode when he's like, I need to change my destiny, take me with you, it didn't come across the way it was meant to. But he's meant to be afraid, like Sarah's speech to him when she's like, these are all the terrible things that are going to happen to you. There's nothing you can do about it. That's meant to shake him, but you don't really see it on his face just because of the way Neil McDonough plays him. It's like trying to get Darkseid to cry. Darkseid does have emotions like real people do. He just never shows them. So if it wasn't clear, the stuff that Sarah told him at the end of the episode was meant to make him afraid. But the whole reason for the episode is basically to heat up the Cold War, basically get Russia in the United States, or the Soviet Union in the United States, to attack each other. It was still the Soviet Union at that time. So they were getting ready to disarm. The plan was to blow up the summit so that both leaders were killed and both nations retaliated against each other. But on the side, Damien Dark, like the thing that he was trying to get, they did a very Pulp Fiction thing where they don't actually show you the talisman, they just open the little box. It was the thing the Reverse Flash initially stole off of Rex Tyler, that talisman. That was what they were trying to get. So here's the next big thing. This is a really comic booky thing because it gets back to comic book Flashpoint. The Reverse Flash's single goal in his life is to erase Barry Allen without erasing himself. That is why he cannot chop Barry Allen's head off because he would cease to be. It would completely destroy his timeline. So he has to find a way to get rid of Barry Allen without getting rid of himself. And that is what his main goal is on Legends of Tomorrow. It's the whole reason for forming the Legion of Doom. So just keep that in the back of your mind. They just ordered four more episodes, so there's 17 episodes total. So, you know, whatever the fulfillment of the Reverse Flash's plan is, we won't find out to like the last couple of episodes of the season, whether or not he's successful. But whatever it is he's trying to construct, the you know, like the special objects, the magical artifacts that he's using to construct some crazy device to get rid of Barry, we'll probably learn what that is pretty soon. But just remember that they kind of alternate between mythology episodes where you have Legion of Doom plotting. Like, this episode was a big mythology episode because it moved the plot forward. Then they alternate with, like, the one-off episodes where they just go off and have an adventure that has absolutely nothing to do with the Legion of Doom. 
So within the next couple of episodes, we'll probably start learning more about what the reverse flash has planned for Barry Allen. But we did get that future message from Barry saying that a war was coming, like a big time war. It sounds like it's going to get super crazy. So we'll probably see some stuff from that in the next couple of episodes. Remember, they jump around time. So eventually we'll probably travel to the future and meet that old Barry Allen. And at the end of the episode, most of you probably remember the end of Flash season one. The reverse flash, the Harrison Wells reverse flash, built a time ship that was modeled after an old Rip Hunter Time Masters time ship. This was that very same time ship. So Damien Dark is riding inside season one reverse flash's time ship. But the other big thing in the episode was explaining what happened to the JSA. So that happens through Obsidian's character. The producers, the actors have now all confirmed that he is the son of the Alan Scott Green Lantern, just like in the comics. But as you see, Obsidian's an old man here. So the way Lance Henriksen explained it, the way, like the way he played the character, is that he has a lot of abandonment issues from his father. So something happened to Alan Scott when he was a young boy. He went, you know, wait for it, like most teenagers, went super dark when he was young, but now has kind of come back from that and chilled out a little bit. So he kind of explains why there's no real JSA. Basically, everybody died on this mission. So that is why he is the only one who was left alive. So he's just kind of left with his grief, like all of his friends have died. So the thing is, is that, you know, we only saw one JSA member in this episode. We're going to jump around in time. We'll run into other members of the JSA. We'll see other JSA stuff in future episodes. So even though as of right now, they are basically gone, like the JSA doesn't exist anymore, we will still see more JSA stuff in the episodes. And I think part of the idea of the season in them fixing things, like them defeating the Reverse Flash and the Legion of Doom, is that they'll save everybody in the past so that the JSA will go on to have this really rich history, and then there'll be a more modern version of the JSA in the future, whether or not that becomes the Legends team. But great heat wave, rays, scenes, I hate the 80s, you killed my beers, do you want some jelly beans? Yes, yes I would like some jelly beans. And then when he's eating the donut, just as they're getting ready to get blown to smithereens, like, well, you know, oh well, we're gonna die, might as well have a donut. There were Star Trek TNG shoutouts. They even used Kenny Loggins in the episode. So Miami Vice, Top Gun, Reverse Flash, probably one of my favorite episodes. But let me know in the comments, what was your guys' favorite moment from the episode and what do you want them to do with the Legion of Doom going forward? Obviously, they're going to meet Malcolm Merlin eventually. He'll join the team. Then we'll see Captain Cold. I know everybody's wondering where Captain Cold is. He'll make his debut relatively quickly. It'll be interesting to see what happens because Ray has been using his gun. So Captain Cold is probably going to be pretty pissed about that. But it's not going to be the same version of Captain Cold. Remember Flashpoint, the timeline's been changed. So this version of Captain Cold that we'll meet will be more evil. He will work with the Legion of Doom. But if you guys didn't see it, the Fortnite crossover is coming up pretty quickly. I just posted the first trailer for that, so I'll put a link at the end of this. But it's only going to get crazier from here. So I'll say congratulations to this week's DC giveaway winner, Juan Barrera. You win a $20 Amazon gift card. Be sure to private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact details. But what's going to happen next is they just dropped a whole bunch of Star Wars Rogue One footage. So I'll do a video for that. Be sure to subscribe to get that. There will be a new round of the DC giveaway whenever I post my next DC video. So there'll be a bunch more Marvel, a bunch more DC happening. There's actually a lot of stuff coming in December, especially comic book stuff, but Rick and Morty, Star Wars Rogue One. So you'll start to see more videos for that stuff in the next couple weeks too. While you guys wait for that to post, you can click here for the Fortnite crossover trailer and you can click here for a teaser for Killer Frost Vibe comic book costumes. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.